I've been interested in physical computing and have been wanting to experiment with motion control for a while. I learned about the .NET Micro Dare to Dream Different Challenge at the Austin Maker Faire and thought it would be fun to cut my teeth, so to speak, on a computer-controlled Etch-a-Sketch. I've since realized that interfacing to an Etch-a-Sketch is really the Hello World equivalent of CNC or Computer Numerically Controlled Systems. The original Etch-a-Sketch knobs have been removed and replaced with pulleys. The pulleys have teeth that mesh with teeth and belts to eliminate slipping. Turning the pulleys are two stepper motors. Stepper motors don't rotate freely, but only move in distinct steps. In order to get the motors to turn, the coils of the motor have to be energized in a particular sequence. While it's possible to directly control the stepper, it's easier to use a hardware driver. In this case, an easy driver driver from SparkFun. It only takes two I.O. lines, one for motor direction and another to trigger a step. Two easy drivers are being used, one for each motor. Originally, I wanted the Etch-a-Sketch to be completely untethered, so communication between the PC and the Etch-a-Sketch is via the XB modules. However, I ended up requiring wires just for the power. The stepper motors require an additional 12 volt power source. There's also some additional hardware that was laser cut just to hold everything together. The design that was just drawn is a third order Cosper curve. Software on the embedded side is broken up into five modules. The motor driver is responsible for talking to the easy driver hardware. It also keeps track of current motor positioning and performs backlash adjustment as needed. An implementation of the Briesenham line drawing algorithm is used to convert lines into stepper motor commands. OpenSBP is a language used to control ShopBot CNC routers. The OpenSBP interpreter deals with the few commands needed to control the Etch-a-Sketch. The serial port module opens the serial port connected to the XB modem and passes commands to the OpenSBP interpreter. Lastly, the console logger allows an easy way of showing status and or logging data while the Etch-a-Sketch is running. On the PC side, the primary utility is called ETS. It's used to copy an open SBP file to the Etch-a-Sketch via the XB wireless modem. Two other useful utilities are Hilbert, which generates SBP commands to trace a fractal Hilbert curve of specified size and order, and Gosper, which likewise generates SBP commands to trace a fractal Gosper curve of specified size and order. Of special interest is the process to convert an image to SBP commands. First off, the image is converted to a bunch of dots via a process called Veroni stippling, which minimizes the number of dots required and produces a more organic looking image. Next, a path connecting the dots is generated by using the Concord Traveling Salesman Problem Solver. The path is converted to open SBP commands and sent to the Etch-a-Sketch. I've programmed using embedded C++ with a different toolchain, and I have to say that using C Sharp and Dev Studio is a pleasure. The way that development, deployment, and debugging is integrated into Visual C Sharp takes away a lot of the pain of embedded development. My only complaint is the .NET Micro Framework documentation, but only in comparison to the other .NET Framework docs. If you compare the documentation for a class or method that is in both the .NET Micro and standard frameworks, you notice that the Micro Framework documentation lacks examples. I frequently ended up with two windows open to both sets of documentation. Finally, I'd like to thank my wife and kids for putting up with me, Craig Kaplan and Robert Bosch for their prior work on Traveling Salesman Path Art, Chris Enright for a little bit of backlash brainstorming, Rapid Tech for the use of their laser cutter, and Microsoft for allowing me to compete in the challenge.
Thanks.